The world always has an original, whether it is in art or whether it is in every day. What happens if this is replicated and remade? Does it live up to the original? The Literary License Podcast explores the world of the original and remake as we explore and see if the remake truly stands up to the original. With your hosts Joe Randazzo, John Wilson, Vicky Ray, and Keith Chago, where they ask the question, does the remake live up to the original? Welcome to Literature Lessons Podcast. In this Make Remake Week, we'll be covering two films, the original and the remake. And this time we're doing DOA from 1950 and DOA from 1988. And before we get started, let's find out who's with us. We got Vicki Ray with us. Hello, Vicki. Hi, everybody. John Wilson. Hello, everybody. And David Cavallo. Hello, David. Hi, everyone. And before we get started, let's find out what we've been up to, starting with you, John. What have you been up to since last time we spoke to you? I've been ruling the world. No, uh, I have been um, just working Somebody's my butt got off. To. <laughs> been working my butt off, and uh, I've been getting into Diary of a CEO on YouTube, which is a really fascinating podcast. Diary of a CEO. Um, it's just a. I, I mean, I've been into this like very. Like, I love hearing people's experiences, life right. experiences and stuff, but it's about people who are, who are either actors. So the one that was on um, Walking Dead, Macy. So mm-hmm. Macy, Macy did a, a podcast with this um, Steven and oh. it just, she talked about her experience in growing up as an actress, but like her childhood. And like, so I've been kind of like diving into that um, and um, watching you on Netflix, which has is, is been so far so f- fun, but you know, uh, the season's not over yet. So I'm just kind of trying How to pace myself. How many episodes are you in? I'm on episode six. So I, I started six today and I was like, I have to, I got into something. So I was like, I need that show. You kind of need attention to watch it. Cause you're like, what's going on? Cause it's, it's very, uh, it moves fast. It moves fast, but it's like very, like you want to, you want to know you want to know his mind and how it works and how he is either being manipulated or how he's manipulating things. Um, So you kind of have to like pay attention to it, but um, yeah. And other than that, just, you know, living in JC. Yep. And what about yourself, David, what are you even up to? Right. So it's mainly working crazy, crazy, crazy. It's constantly working, working, working. However, I've been carrying on watching The Good Place TV show on Netflix. I'm towards the end. This, again, super recommended. It's quite fun. Then I've been carrying on watching Charmed and Angel, the basically very, very old TV show. For, they, they, will, they will last for a long time because it, it, it takes long to go through all of them. And I've carried on also, well, I started actually doing a sort of anime marathon. So I'm watching a anime genre. I don't know if anybody ever watch Magical Girls uh, anime. Um, I would be obsessed. So I'm kind of like marathoning, going to the very, very old over anime. Here right I'll, now. I'll have to ask my friend because my friend is a huge anime fan. Um, I'm surprised I'm not because I like comic, but I don't. I don't like. I've got never grandsons really got just loves that anime stuff. Yeah. By the way, Good Place, one of my favorite shows. I can't wait to see. Uh, I can't wait good to places. hear how you like the end of it because the end of it was very I'm surreal. Curious. It's getting it's really very good. philosophical. I love and, the and that's one like of the shows that the and... writers wrote it exactly the way they wanted and the network wanted them to keep going and they said nope we we have this exactly the way we wanted it this is how we're doing it and there's nothing after that and so. that's the way i like it as well i'm not a big fan when like oh let's just ask the fan what they want with it no just this is your work this is your art keep it like that they like it they'll watch it they don't like it tough i'm sorry but that's that's you know that's personalities and stuff and then um after after watching this stuff so in the last three four days i've been feeling a little bit inspired so i started reorganizing my notes because i've been trying for many many years like writing a book and i've been trying to tidy up my notes and then i had to put something in the background while while writing and i decided to put like a random documentary of of netflix called unexplained mysteries oh i've been watching that that's pretty good i like it it's yeah, so it's it's so it's ridiculous because it was in the background. Then I stopped writing and I started getting so much into it. So you got pulled into the mystery. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Like it's, it's oh my god, it's scary. There's this eerie and comfortable atmosphere. Like something is going to happen. Like there's a tension constantly. Maybe it's the music. Maybe the story of this like an explained stuff. And you you I get so much attracted by it. And then suddenly it's like you know during the evening. 
everything is dark and I look around the room, it's like, okay, there's going to be somebody here in the room jumping on me and killing me or something. You know, they have that sort of tension and darkness. Did you ask the one about the body in the bag that they found on the highway? No, I'm, I'm on episode three, I maybe five. I started recently. By the way, that series is a new version of the older Unsolved Mysteries. And so I yeah. remember oh. as a I need kid to watch the older watching... One. Unsolved Mysteries and that song when it came on it gave me chills because it was yeah, a, it it was a yes. it's the same After song Goosebumps. it's the same modern version of that song but it used to be really creepy it used Robert to be like it is generally scary I, I, the last thing the last episode I watched was the one about aliens uh, like this like UFO appearing because I had a period like many, many, many years ago when I was obsessed with alien and UFO researching and doing Area 51. Oh, that was a good one because that, that was the whole town, right? Because the whole town yeah, yeah, talks yeah. about that night and each person yeah. is like, oh, this is what happened near me. This is what happened near me. And it was like UFOs throughout the entire Kind of town. hard to dispute it when, people, when everybody's seen it. Yeah. I'm like, 40 people, well, like 40 I mean, people are like reporting it. It's crazy. I don't know. To me, it sounds like Fire Ireland in August that everyone's just anally probed. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. You're you like, do you see those lights? What are you taking? Can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we'll go out in the bush and get anally probed together. <laughs> Religious theories. <laughs> oh, I was watching some old South Park and Cartman got friggin' it got abducted by aliens and he got an anal probe and they wouldn't leave him alone <laughs> about the anal probe. I don't know why that ended up on TV the other night ago, but this is funny. I'll, oh, it was South an old Park, one. It wasn't uh, a new one. Yeah, oh it God, was back when, 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 Car when Cartman had a satellite disc coming out of his ass. Yes, so. it kept popping <laughs> out of his ass. <laughs> but this <one> was fun. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that one before. I'm gonna have to start watching those again. Those are fun. <laughs> yeah, because I start, I started watching. I started rewatching the South Park because after the Harry and Meghan episode. Oh God! Yes. It. Oh my God! That was brilliant. <laughs> that was. We just want our privacy. <laughs> we want our privacy. <laughs> and what else have you been up to, David? Um. Yeah. So. The last two days I've been watching this stuff and I slowly like stepped away from writing and just got so much into the TV show. And then suddenly I have this memory of this like big, massive media thing that happened in North Italy many, many years ago. I think it was 2000 and something. There was this murder of a mother killing the son and it was based in big investigation lasting for months. And then there was a documentary TV show in, Ita in Italy called Killa Vista, which means who saw him. And it was a, like a documentary TV show with interviews and stuff of people, people disappearing and they would interview the family and the people who know it. We do researches with the police and blah, blah, blah. So I started watching that too. I like, <laughs> I got completely lost into it. Uh, it was last night uh, but yeah that's it <laughs> that's it for me <laughs> what are we yourself vicky what are you been up to not a lot i've just been spring break and we were gonna have my grandson over but my daughter's got a very vicious case of covid she's just down oh. so he's finally going home today so fingers crossed but i i love my kids but i do not want that shit I get, I just catch everything. Every time someone's got it, I'll get it. I don't care. So it's like, I love everybody. I love you, but I know. I, I literally wear a mask. I don't give a shit if people look at me crazy. I've been sick like four times this year. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm not COVID, but like just sick. And I'm like, nope. Mm -mm. Oh God. I know there's so many other nasty things out there to catch too. I mean, it's not just COVID. There's just all kinds of rank ass. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong wearing, nothing wrong wearing a mask. I mean, in, in for example, in, in Japanese culture, they normally do it when, when you're sick and you have the flu, you automatically eat. By social norm, you need to wear a mask. Yeah, it's you mean the they culture, do the right so. thing if they're going outside and not getting everyone sick? <laughs> yeah. that mask, well, that mask is debatable. I don't. I mean, if, if it protects you, then you know, it makes you feel better. Then yeah. no, it just means you're not spreading. If if you're going yeah, yeah. outside, look, I when I get sick, I also lock myself. I'm not up wearing it alone so in not, my shower. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying like if you're at home, you're at home. But you get people who come to work or they go places and they're like, or somebody said, their just mom. don't go to work. I just, yeah. I mean, just don't go. I don't care what you got. Don't go. Yeah, but well, certain, certain companies don't pay you if you don't go to work. So it's kind of like, well, or or <laughs> your manager makes you feel like you have to come to work. Well, there like are people you know. that are like that. I'm sure we've all had bosses yeah. like that that just 
<laughs> I don't wear I don't wear a mask because it's my way of keeping the population down as I spread my <laughs> deathly germs to everyone around me. <laughs> well, we all overpopulated. So again, uh Vicky call the CDC when he comes back into yeah, the I'm country. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm going to call the CDC and Homeland Security <laughs> as soon as he gets to Texas. <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Yeah, what else? Oh, well, if Joe was here, he'd appreciate it. I watched The Hills Run Red, one of those random movies. Weird, really gory. Joe, I guess, is familiar with the director and stuff. And he, I guess he does some of the Puppet Master movies, I believe. Oh, okay, I like, I like the Puppet Master movies. I think, I believe I want to say that. And what else? The Finished Last of Us, he did that. And me, I took Asher to see 65. It was actually pretty good. It's not going to win Oscars. But it's really good for, for monsters and whatnot and anxiety attacks. And Adam Driver's really good in it. He really is. So it's not a big, there's still like very, there's only like really two people on the, in the whole thing. You know, it's not a very, very big cast at all. But I thought it was really well done. And um, I watched this other thing the other day go, made me sad. I, I was watching Bella Lugosi, Fallen Vampire. Talk about Hollywood. She's spitting you out after they're done with you. You know, what a, what a sad story that was. I mean, all those old actors really kind of felt, all of them, like not just Bella Lugosi, who else was in um, uh, Wolfman? Lon Chaney Jr., I want to say. He, they all had oh, yeah. such sad endings. They really did. It's really, I mean, just just play a nine from outer space. If that don't tell you how bad off Lugosi probably was when he made that Edwin movie. <laughs> just, but... I don't know. I would like to do a whole season of Ed Wood. I'm telling you, I, there's so much material, like, you know, Glenn or Glenn, the, all of that stuff. It's just all fun, good stuff. The, the porn years. The porn years, <laughs> yeah. We could do that, too. That'd be even more funny. But no, other than that, it's been a really quiet, kind of stormy couple of days, but everything's good. Just got to catch up on that garden stuff, and life is awesome. Mm. What about y'all? Cool. Um, I've been, well, I dropped Ferris off at the airport on Saturday, um, went through an emotional re-justification, but back on track. And, I hate um, dropping out. You know what? I think I, I don't um, mind leaving as much as I hate being left behind. I think that makes me more sad. <laughs> like everybody it was, <laughs> it was, well, let's just sit there and say my normal hard exterior was crumbled a bit but it's fine now so oh my god you so mean like, see, you somebody, mean your heart actually started beating again is what i you're know to say? i was gonna say but you <laughs> it's like it's like the episode of uh of uh, will mm. and grace where you, lynn jack leans into karen he's like there it is <laughs> it's like it's like every and there yeah. it is <laughs> i know he's my, not all warm and fuzzy with us but thank god he could be warm and fuzzy <laughs> with somebody gee many crickets yeah but um and other than that um we started uh watching alice in borderland so we're watching that on netflix oh is that any good moment. yeah I i'm liking it so and then um, we started watching the screams because we now have to do this thing where we call date night, which is almost right. every night where we sit there and we got Zoom going and then we're watching a film together. So that's what we oh, do now. That's so, that's so, so lovely. That's that's me. Yeah, you yeah. never do that. I feel I feel so left out. You never call me for Zoom meetings for movies. This <laughs> well, is where it gets insulting. I'm waiting for it. That's because you're always stoned on gummy bears. <laughs> 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 they're not gummy bears <laughs> they're pot brownies <laughs> they're not hey i'm telling you what this one said it takes four hours you know to kick in and it's like oh this ain't shit so i eat another one about two hours later i'm fighting for my life you know <laughs> <laughs> it just took a little bit of time to go down the intestinal track <laughs> yeah but um and then i finished watching last of us which um i really recommend everyone to see yeah. Um, which is excellent. excellent. I finished playing Atomic Heart on Xbox. Oh, how is that, by the way? It's very, very good. Excellent. Very good. Um, it can be difficult, but it's very good. Um, the reason why I was playing it is because my agent got a contract because they're going to come out with Atomic 2 in six years' time, and they're asking for someone to do some dialogue work on it. So Nice. Nice. Um, 
So I played that to get the feel for that. And um, what else have we been doing? Um, oh, and I'm looking forward to Yellow Jackets, I think, which starts next week. How many seasons I, are out of Yellow Jackets? So it's far? only one. So this is the one. second season. So I wouldn't um, have too long to catch up. Because it came out yeah. finally on one of my streaming channels. So. I saw a lot of press around that for this season. And I'm now I'm like curious to watch it because I know what it's about. But it's like I'm curious to watch because they're doing a lot of the parallel between the younger and older versions yeah, of right. them. Yeah. yeah. I heard that but was the, an excellent, excellent. I but the first season, I, I mean, the first season with, I mean, Juliet Lewis and Christina Ritchie. I mean, it's Christina oh, Ritchie really? is fucking fantastic. Yeah. She won an award, she won an award for it really yeah okay. yeah yeah i want an emmy for it and then of course um and then i finished watching um welcome to the chippendales on disney stars platform is that, here. Oh, yeah. uh, is that is that uh is that like a reality or is that a it show? is oh, it, it's a it's a dramatization of the what about the what happened how chippendales somebody else told me there's so much stuff i want to watch there's just so but much the, stuff but I, the great, the, I mean it's got a great cast juliet lewis is freaking fantastic in it the oh. gay guy from The Last of Us, you know, the one one of the couple guys that was in that, the like I episode. said, that that guy, the the older guy, or was it, it the it. other? Uh, a that, friend of mine, the other guy. Was, Seriously, a friend of mine I, was actually in that, that series. By the way, <laughs> I said that before, but that was probably one of the best heartbreaking depictions of a gay male couple I have ever seen. Was in The Last of Us. I was yeah. on the floor. I was literally on the floor. That was the saddest shit. But it was. So I said there say. Done. I said there say there are two TV shows that depicted so well a homosexual relationship in the most unique ways, and that was The Last of Us, yeah. and um, the so, gods so humanizing are, too. I mean, and, which and, one? And What's American Gods as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. When, when you had the oh, when you yes. had the when you had the when you had the Muslim guy. Uh, I, I tried to watch American oh, Gods, but it was on one of these networks where I couldn't watch it. My friend was like, oh, my God, you have to watch it. I was like, if it, it was on a good. network, I can watch it. Like, because I was trying to actually watch it. Um, Yo, it's on, it's on the Am house, but it's, it's, it's an good. Amazon. It's an Amazon Prime. Um, OK. Series. Yeah, I think so. it is on Prime. But seriously, I, 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 like, I was telling Keith about it. I've just never seen anybody write a, write a gay couple, male or female, that mm. that heart wrenching and that. Even well, if you, it's have, also your, if you like, have an attitude about gay people, you need to watch that one episode because you won't have an attitude after you Well, watch they also them. wrote them as human, right? They didn't write them yeah. specifically as gay yeah, people, well, they, right? Well, and they, I think they, that's they just, the story, just two you know? People yeah. that met haphazardly and then the apocalypse fell in love, stayed together 20 years. But I mean, it's just the way they did it. It was, it was just very well done. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. They, they throw all the stuff in there that, you know, that trophy crap, you know? You, it is just you'll you'd like it you would it's, it's well so sad. It's kind of, i mean you know during an apocalyptic setting it's really hard to have two gay people dancing to i will survive in a gay bar isn't it they so. did oh, no, what, was it? <laughs> what was that movie with cuba gooding or cuba gooding jr what was a boat boat trip yeah oh my god i love that movie i need to, that i've got to watch that again that is one of my favorite movies mm. i don't know why i just thought of that but i love that movie mm. So beyond that, that's pretty much all I've been up to. So everybody's and got I guess, these exciting lives now. We're so boring. Well, I guess that now brings us to our first feature, which is DOA, which is a 1950s film, which is American film noir directed by Rudolph Maté, starring Edmund O'Brien and Pamela Britton. It is considered a classic of the genre. A fatally poisoned man tries to find out who has poisoned him and why. It was the film debut of Beverly Garland as Beverly Campbell and Loretta Lutz. Leo C. Popkin produced DOA for a short-lived Cardinal, Cardinal Pictures, due to a filing error, the copyright to the film was not renewed on time, causing it to fall into public domain. It was subsequently remade as Colored Me Dead from 1969, remade in DOA in 1988, and Dead on Arrival in 2017. What we're going to do is cut to the trailer of DOA from 1950, and we'll be right back. 
I want to report a murder. Where was this murder committed? San Francisco, last night. Who was murdered? I was. Is the blonde alone? Oh, sure, society. She always comes in alone. Can I buy you a drink? Sure thing. I left my uh, blast at the other end of the bar. This is mine. Mine was bourbon. Why don't you meet me later? It's kind of hard to describe the feeling. Maybe it was the drinks I had last night. I might have mixed them too much, huh? Our tests reveal the presence in your body of a luminous, toxic matter. You don't have very long. A day. Possibly a week. Oh, this is impossible. I don't believe it. I don't think you fully understand, Bigelow. You've been murdered. What do you know about a man named George Reynolds? I take so many pictures, I can't remember them all. Just who are you? What do you want? Never mind who I am. Where's Reynolds? Listen to me. This thing is going to explode wide open. If you've got nothing to hide, you better start talking. Just who are you trying to protect, Miss Foster? Why are you so afraid to tell the truth? You can't do that to Chester. I'm gonna blow your guts out. I don't know what you're talking about. You're in this right up to your pretty little neck. <laughs> For a man, I'd punch your dirty face in. Back to Legalize the Podcast, we're discussing DOA from 1950. So, John, what are your thoughts of DOA from 1950? Oh, Paula, that's all I can say is Paula, Paula, Paula. <laughs> uh, I I love that, you know, we dip in sometimes to these noir style films. Um, and to me, it, it just makes me miss that sometimes. I think we... I think the last time we got something similar to this, which as we covered before was like LA confidential, like that feeling of Noah. I miss that in films, the mystery of it. Um, I actually love that the stakes are high knowing that a person's going to die and you get that right at the start. And then it kind of takes you back to like what happens and you know, why, you know, this is happening. It is a little bit confusing because obviously terminology is very different at oh, that time <laughs> so i, I was know. like a wait blast. what <laughs> i know it's like i'm to... gonna order a blast the time i go to bar give me a blast <laughs> well and even like just the explanation of like why he was targeted and what the you know like all of that was like a little confusing like did it, you yeah. think so too because i had to go yeah. back and look through it because i couldn't figure out why they wanted to poison him yeah, because it's like it's almost like owning okay. a deed for something and then knowing like so knowing terminology, but everything was also being thrown at you so fast by multiple people that you kind of just got just a me. little. No, I'm actually glad they're not the only one who thought it was yeah. a little bit confusing. I was lost, <laughs> no, because I had to go back and watch it like, in the middle part because I was no, trying I to mean, figure out no, about the no, deed, ba- about the boat that was signed. Yeah, the, basically what happened, basically the whole premise is, is that um, they were getting rid of anyone because the deed that they need to sit there and get rid of the deed because with this right. deed being signed means that um, they thought there was a loss of money, but come to find out if, they, if the deed was found, all that money is going to transfer. So they had to kill anyone that was associated with that deed. So the money stays with the original people. But it also gets a little convoluted because there's the affair and there's like, so that's what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. it was really confusing because I was like, wait, who are you and why? Like, like <laughs> yeah. what the hell is going on? Like, and it was, a, that was like, I think the hardest thing for me. I like, I liked that he came to his senses, you know, and, and was able to kind of profess his love to her, but it was like, 
What Paula, move the fuck on. Like, move on, Paula. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like getting to a point where it's like, okay, I get you love him, but like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what is happening? You know? It, yeah, because I, yeah, he was kind of a player. I oh, mean, yeah, she definitely. was madly in love with him. And he was just like boldly in his face, or her face. I mean, she's madly in love with him. He's being kind of a, he kind of had it coming. He was a turd. Well, I mean, even in the first scene, like, you know, yeah. the other, that woman sitting on his desk and she's like, oh, you're going to yeah. do my taxes, you know, and she's like, ah, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, so he's like, he's single. And then, then when she walks in and she's kind of like, it's like they're in a relationship. I'm like, wait, I'm so confused. Cause I would think as a woman, I'd be like, get the hell off of my man's desk. What do you do? You know, and then I'm like, no shit, but it's also a different time. Right. So a different yeah. time. You couldn't do that now. You couldn't even do that. You know, in I can 80s. tell you 20 years ago, I could not slather across my boss's desk like that. It just wasn't happening. Yeah. You can't do that. But I mean, especially with the other, I mean, I don't know, even was she a client, basically? Or she was, was a she... client. Yeah, she was a client. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She was very familiar. And I guess she didn't know maybe that her, him and the other girl were seeing each other. I don't, I don't really know. I just think he was like, must have been a huge player because apparently even for her, like her little you know, I know you're going on this trip and, you know, if you do something, you know, it's okay. And I'm yeah. like, what? Like, and it's, it's, it's sort of, you know. I don't know too many women that would tolerate that. It's like, bitch, don't come home. But you it's know? also like, again, a different time, right? So like when he gets to the hotel yeah, and everyone's maybe. partying and, you know, the guys and, the, you know, it's, it's a different See what he time. left his, he left his door open on purpose. So the party was going on directly across yeah. the other room at the hotel. I mean, I was looking for trouble. That's what I, he was But I was also wondering if that them. was, I was wondering if that was an actual thing that happened in the forties. Like, I don't know. It, might, it, was, people, it was a convention. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you I, mean, know. I think you also need to remember this is a time where women weren't even able to vote yet and own property. True, true. So yeah. you're gonna, so you're gonna, so well, you're, we can uh, vote in the 20s. We got the right to vote in the 20s. This is after the 20s. Yeah, but you still couldn't own property or anything. Everything had to go through a man. You couldn't own a, you couldn't own a bank account, uh, a shared, only a shared yeah. bank account. Who yeah. was the, uh, who was the woman uh, that was basically like sitting on his lap at the bar? <laughs> that was like the funniest thing that she's married, right? She's like, ah, you know, you come with us. You got to come. And then I, and literally, like the husband keeps looking. I'm thinking, are you going to tell your wife get the hell off of someone? Like he, she was literally up on his lap, like you know. She was a handful. Oh yeah, for real, probably for him. Um, you she's know that bar, uh, she's, she's a bar fly. <laughs> but yeah, do you know that scene where he's running down the street when he finds out he's been poisoned? I guess they're calling oh, yeah. it assault. I didn't know this, but they said the pedestrians were on the sidewalk, and I thought that was a really good shot. And then I was reading about it. And I guess they shot that scene and the pedestrians had no idea that uh, Edward O'Brien was going to be. Oh, so they had real that. reactions. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, I think, illegal, right? Because they're like, because clearly you have to get like permits and stuff. So they probably just on the fly were like, shoot this scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No wow. warning. They said no warning at all. And he just started yeah. plowing through people. And it did look pretty natural. I'm going, wow, that looks really good. And I looked it up. It's like, oh, they didn't know he was coming. To see it now. Ready, shoot, run, Forrest, run. Yeah. <laughs> Cops are coming. Get back in the car. They this one that. immediately I mean, went into public domain, I think, for whatever reason. They didn't have a yeah. copyright they, holder for it. No, they had a copyright, but when the cop, what, what, ha what they need to do, and then this is the reason why I like It's a Wonderful Life and other films are tend to be in the public domain is every I think it's every 10 to 15 years, they have to renew the copyright. If you don't renew the copyright, then it goes to public oh, domain. Yeah. Okay. So, they, yeah. so they forgot to renew it. But this, uh, um, this was a, this wasn't a Hollywood but, um, studio film. This was a, this is one of the first uh, independent films, actually. It was done by a really independent um, production company called Cardinal. Yeah. This is the first one and only film that they made. So. I guess they got the storyline um, from the German film, The Man in Search of His Murderer. That was a 1931 film. And that was directed by Robert S-I-O-M-A-K. Yeah, I don't want to mutilate the, the language like he <laughs> He mutilates everybody else's name. 
but now apparently that it, except no, my I, own i don't i don't massacre my own <laughs> just everyone else's <laughs> Well, basically, he is dead on arrival, and he has to search for his murderer because he's dead. He's the walking dead, basically. Mm -hmm. He ain't getting up. And somebody, please tell me, is there such a thing as luminescent toxin? Oh yeah. I I think I mean I think that would be a, an equivalent to maybe um, antifreeze. You think? Because if you yes, because oh, I think if wow, you put antifreeze yeah. if you put antifreeze in someone saying you dead, you dead. I right. never even thought of it, but yeah. they showed the, remember he showed, it was like a glow stick. And, and that's did. luminescent. So that is luminescent. So maybe they did, they had to have done some yeah. type of research to be like, you know. Well, there's also um, a toxin that's kind of luminescent as well, like in blowfish as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So apparently, I don't know if it's that bright colored. I don't know if it come out of like, you know, the reanimated series. But, I also um, thought, like, I wondered if this yeah. was also very, it seems almost very Shakespearean in a way, because just the way the story is and the way it's told, it felt right, that way. Think? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got that, um, we did cover recently um, the the film with Fred McMurray and um, Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it, so it does have that very, very juxtaposition, you know, where, the man comes in, he's dying or something's happened. This is the, you know, and he tells his story and then at the end he croaks. Yeah. And that's a lot of film noirs. I mean, I think we had Scarlet, there's Scarlet Street and they were really yeah. big at this time sort of thing. I mean, I also um, think of Hitchcock when we did South by Southwest, like that yeah. like was God, similar that, that way. Yeah. That is such a yeah. great movie. So, but yeah, I mean, these, um, but I mean, it has all the film noir characteristics that you would expect in a film noir. The brooding um, darkness, yeah, basically. Brooding darkness, um, Jezebel women, women that are up to no good. I know, my God, oh, these, these noir films really make women look like slut buckets. <laughs> well, and the other, the I mean, I mean, it's important that, you know, we, you know, that films, you know, display a reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I guess it's so you're bad. Not, you're not gonna get get any, you know, VQ points again here today. Kate. I I think one of the best Never characters do. to me was Clarence because he just was sociopathic. Like he just was like that. That when he's in the car with him and he's like, "I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you in the belly." And he like he just is like creepy, like. You know, Ugh. the villain, I'm trying to remember what his name was, but you know who he reminded me of. He reminded me of the, the villain in Who Killed Roger Rabbit or Who Framed Roger Rabbit oh. for some reason with the overcoat and the hat. I go, is this where <laughs> yeah. Roger Rabbit oh, got yeah. the idea? I can see that. Okay. No, I think it's his eyes because he has these like crazy eyes. Like he and the just hat. He's got the hat thing yeah. going on. <laughs> but I don't know. I, was, I thought he did a great job playing that you know sociopathic like i'm gonna hurt you and i'm gonna like it i'm gonna hurt you yeah. and he just was like, oh i also that's i mean what i found quite interesting is that none of the women really are normally get like all these kind of classy women who are kind of but these women all seem like street smart they were dames oh, yeah ain't nothing but a dame ain't nothing so, but a dame so like fred thought, McMurray calls them dames dolls no well, what it, but what I quite liked about about the women in this, though, is that they felt more real than you normally get. They weren't as polished as you would normally get in this kind mm. of era of film. Yeah, they weren't like backdrops. Like each one of them had a, a holding character like um, Miss um, Foster, who was like the, the assistant to um, Holiday. And mm -hmm. she even her character felt more real and especially they had a couple scenes where he remember he comes to her home and he's like oh you lied to me and then you know it, it, she felt like an established character versus a dingy assistant right and she's just a backdrop Ooh. type of character you know but when you have I mean, that girl the young girl at the bar really what was her purpose because she was just there for that one she really didn't serve purpose like say meg ryan in the second one I think, I think that she that's... served the purpose of he was looking for something he couldn't have. And then, you know, mm -hmm. once he had someone that was kind of interested, but like, hey, it's up to you. Right. I think her her purpose was to show that he, the... he was a sec he was sexually attracted to women were sexually was this attracted like a to him. midlife crisis thing with him. You think? Or... I think it's just well, he's a guy. I think that's I mean, what yeah. is establishing is that. Yeah. yeah. 
and, yeah, and they had thought of settling guy. down too right like because she wanted she made her intentions yeah. very clear yeah. like i want to settle down don't you want to settle down and he's like ah, i don't know you know he's kind of less you know mm. and i think that what her why do want to why do want to buy the cow from getting the milk for free <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think her purpose was literally he was going to call her and then Paula sent the flowers and then she calls him and it's it's a very sweet and you know surreal moment for him because then he's like I'm going to make the choice to choose her and he kind of like chose her then not when he's like I'm dying he chose her right then in that moment you know oh this is I mean, one of the top 100 most heart pounding American movies yeah I mean I think another thing that we should look at is the director Rudolph Matt. I mean, he directed Dante's Inferno, Stella Dallas, that's right, uh, the that's foreign right. correspondent, Pride of the Yankees, Gilda. I mean, this yeah. guy has, I mean. Oh my God, Pride of, of the Yankees. I don't know any of that. My mom said when they seen that, when that came out, she said there wasn't a dry eye in the house because that really was extreme. That that was a great movie. I love that movie, Pride of the Yankees. I, always I mean, that. this, I mean, he was a, he was a cinematographer before directing this. His films, so. his, 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 I don't know. I mean, I'm not is versed in, in all the, the photography and the film and what speed and what millimeter or whatever. But I, I have noticed that it was really beautifully filmed. I mean, as yeah. far as, as far as the, you know, I, I don't know if it's like the silver or whatever. I don't know. There's just something so classy and so cool about the, black and white. The one thing is like ge geographically, it's a little BS because I lived in California and there's okay, no so way in hell. BS. It, there's no way in hell you're going from Los Angeles to San Francisco to Los Angeles back to San Francisco. Like he he made like five trips within that film, and I was like, like, "That is a long drive." How are you getting? There? No, he did fly, but I was just kind of like, "This is all happening in a day." No, I, I, there's I, no I couple have, of days left to leaving. So yeah, I, honestly don't I was think like, back then there was that many flights going back and forth commuter wise like that too. I mean, well, he seemed to also have a he was a man of money. Let's say like he didn't he didn't mm. seem like he was worried about getting a rental car or you know like he seemed to have wealth. But I was still like, I don't know about <laughs> I don't know about this. Like he was just like that moment where he's like. Okay, now I'm gonna go back, and I was like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, they, like what? You're like, you're going, going back? What was he driving? What was that car? It's gonna drive me nuts. A Plymouth? It wasn't a Plymouth. I think it was. I'm gonna have to look that up. That gonna make me nuts now. It's a Studebaker um, Commander convertible. Yeah, Studebaker. it's a Studebaker. I don't think I've ever Studebaker. seen Studebaker. I've mm. never seen one up close and personal myself, so. I mean, I quite like, I mean, considering that we have to spend the whole film with Edmund O'Brien, I quite, I thought it was quite, I mean, I've never seen him in anything. I don't know where, what he did after this or what he did before that, but I thought he was quite a, a good, solid male lead. Yeah, he grew on me because I think in the beginning, I thought he was a little bit of a pompous ass, but then towards the end, I I was, and it was kind of sad because at the end when he's there, I was like, oh, maybe he's going to, and then he just drops dead. I was like, oh, well, nope, he, he was in, <laughs> he, he was in the man who shot Liberty Valance seven days in May, White Heat and the Barefoot Contessa. So he was, he, these were white. 64, 62, 54, White Heat oh, was after. Nice. So he did after. Oh, yeah. and he's also, um, He's also in the Fantastic Voyage. Oh, I didn't see that. Nope, Ooh. I did not see that. You saw the Fantastic Voyage. That's the one. No, I didn't see that he was in the Fantastic Voyage. He's got yeah, one of those faces. He looked familiar, but I had no idea he was in the other. Because he, well, know, he, he, he made a film in two thousand. Yeah, he came. He was in a film in two thousand eighteen. I don't know how he managed that, considering he died in nineteen eighty five. So, really. Well, that's what it says here. So, don't know how he managed Typo. that. But... Typo. Yeah, or maybe they, maybe he, there's a scene that he shot that they re and he used in a film or something. Who knows? Or maybe he came back from the dead just to come back and shoot this really bad movie. <laughs> a, that zombie. No one saw. a zombie. A zombie. Just to piss people like me off. <laughs> Not a zombie, a walker. <laughs> oh, yeah. A walker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, come on. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay some licensing fee. Be careful of your usage. <laughs> a mover. <laughs> a mover. <laughs> a decomposed mover. How's that? <laughs> so.
I mean, I guess what we should do is probably get to the rating of DOA. And let's start off with you, John. How many stars would you give DOA? Um, I'm actually going to give it four. I really, really liked it. Um, I think I think it's also I, I just the confusion part of it threw me. I think if I maybe watched it again, it would be easier to watch. I think I was just I was trying to watch it going, oh, wait, I'm a little confused. And I'd have to rewind and be like, wait, what did they talk about? Or what are they talking about? So I was, I was a little bit confused by that. But otherwise, I would have given it a five. I mean, it was really good. I liked, um, again, I always love noir. So any type of film that's like that, that has that mystery and detective and trying to figure things out. I love that. What do I say, David? Um, I had to give it a three out of five. I'm just trying to keep it in the middle because there were good parts that I liked. For example, my favorite part was the movie, the scene at the bar when the players were playing the music. There yeah. was such intensity in the way they were playing. They were literally sweating. I, I love that scene. It was like, wow, oh, okay, these are real lovers for music. And I also find sort of like a poetry and kind of like seeing the guy trying to find the truth was his last moment of his life, like trying to find out what happened, you know? But then at the same time, I can agree with John that the movie was a bit confusing for me. And I'll be totally honest, I think I fell asleep in the middle of the movie. <laughs> I, so I had to go back. Twice. I was telling oh, Vicky, you, you fall asleep in every yeah, film. What I wasn't high about? this time, I swear to God. No, but I kept trying to watch the end of it, and I kept. I okay, just, okay, I'm not the only one. I because I, I, I have to. I have to admit, I did that. I I fell asleep during it as well. <laughs> okay, so think. Okay, so this is okay. So hey, what we're okay, saying, very, folks, very is if you watch if you watch this film, folks, it's a good sleep aid. Yeah. So it, it's just, I think it's because it was so complicated in certain parts and too fast that I just suddenly be like, okay, I'm too confused. I don't understand who they're talking about, what they're talking about, what happened, what perspective. I just like, uh. and so it got me very, very confused. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, wasn't a super big fan, but I, I can appreciate it. it was a different time. Things were like spoken differently. Women subjugated to men, which I don't like. I don't do uh, subjugation it, well at all. <laughs> yeah, I you was like, uh, except, except when he was in the hotel and they were doing the party, and you could see that clearly that woman was married to the other to the other man, but she was hanging out with him. It felt yeah. like they were like swingers or something. I don't know. Yeah, they yeah. were swinging. They were doing. Something. But also, I think around that time it was like around the the hay time, right? Uh, because I think then it also kind of it alluded to this other reckless life of partying and tumultuary. Like, mm. so it's, it was a way of like painting. What's the really, go into effect? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know, but it just reminded me of like night Whoa. nurse. I remember night nurse where it was like, they had yes. party scenes and it was like, yes. it made yes. it seem like if you do this, look how bad it is. Like you can't, Oh, you're going to, your wife's going to get taken like by another madness man or, something. Or, or the guy that came up to the bar. So you're talking about the, the bar scene where he's playing yeah. the jazz music and the guy is just like, ah, ah, ah and like, it's oh, yes, meant yes, to yes, say, yes. it's meant to typical. say, look what happens when you listen to too much music, you you're going to go yeah. crazy. You're going to go nuts. So that that was also an intentional thing because the audience yeah. sees it and says, Oh, no, you have, to to be, you have to be moral. You have to be more sound. Like you shouldn't lose control. Like you have to. So that was why they did some of that too. Intentionally. Yeah. 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 And then you yeah, also have to look at, um, if you look at it from a standpoint as well, this is three to four years after people, after the men were coming home from war. Yeah. So, yeah. so you had these women with their independence and then you had them oh, going back true. to their marriages. That's true. And, Sociologically, yeah. things have changed. Who, who yeah. were the breadwinners too, right? So a lot of that independence and strength came from that. Yeah. And then they were told to go back to the home. So then that probably <laughs> creates a lot of problems as well. Maybe so. maybe probably that's why they depicted the character as a kind of being like, well, anytime we say Latin lover, like he's got the girl, but he wants the other girls as well. Yeah. And even for me, even though he was poisoned, I did not feel any sympathy for him. I really didn't I didn't feel like. nothing for him either. <laughs> I didn't feel bad. I'm I like, think towards the, I think towards the end I did because I think they did a good job transforming him, if you will. Had yeah, he not I agree had, with had he actually called that girl and slept with her, then I'd be like, die. <laughs> like then I would have been like, but I think that moment was an important moment because again, he he kind of 
chose her then it he didn't choose her until That's he true. chose her then uh, I, I i i disagree i'm i instead dis- highly disagree the moment when the woman was there it was like oh it takes so much for me to understand who he loves oh that car called that bullshit it's just like sorry because he's scared of you dying and suddenly you want the woman sorry fuck you you deserve to die then i'm really sorry That's you're bullshit. such a sensitive I- male but I also, no, I like, just, I just, I really dislike that. No, it's I can like, also say be a man that. and say sorry. I'm a Latin lover. I love. Can I just say I love pussy? Then do it. Fair enough. Yeah. But then don't just bullshit. Just say just because you're dying. No, sorry, no. I'm not taking that. So but I really I think, dislike I the think car that and the guy. It took a lot for Paula to do to get him to love him, and I, I agree with you on that. Like. That Follow poor woman. That poor woman was. That poor like, woman. Yes. Call yes. Me, absolutely. Um, or just let me know you're okay. I'm here for you. Like he was just like, yeah, but you know, yeah, I agree. She's all. She's a lot like a woman who's in love with a gay man. <laughs> never, <laughs> never that's gonna true. Happen. I mean, if you look at it that way, <laughs> here for you. you're yeah, always yeah, spending you. time with him. Uh, Why won't uh, you spend time with me? Well. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, all, all the unrequited love. <laughs> like, I really love you. I'm here for you, even though you're never. I'm never gonna be with you. Sorry, you're so good at picking out my outfits. I just don't understand why you don't love me. <laughs> me, <laughs> a bit like that. A bit. You also use the same sex toys. <laughs> yeah. Oh damn! <laughs> well, okay. uh, she, she'd be better off. She'd be better off dating a transvestite because at least she could double her wardrobe. <laughs> There you go. Hopefully what, about yourself, mine. <laughs> what about yourself, Vix? What about yourself, Vix? How many stars do you I'm give? I'm gonna that? give it a four. I loved it. I mean, but the, I, the only reason I give it a four, or like three point five four, is because it did lose me a little bit. I was confused as to what was going on with the boat kind of thing and why the guy wanted to kill him. It kind of lost me here and there. But I mean, like I said, I've watched it a couple of times. <laughs> Finally got to see the end. <laughs> Finally stayed awake and watched the end. <laughs> But uh, I don't know why I can't fall asleep to that damn movie. I just did not through the whole movie, just the end, the important part. But I mean, I was kind of impressed with how, you know, he's the cop could have been a little more whatever. He's dead on arrival. It's like, no shit. You know, when he dies in the police station. Yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, guess um, I'm going to give it a four, I guess. I mean, I mean, I think it's an important film, but I did I enjoy it? Um. No, not as much as I thought it was going to, sort of thing. It, was, it didn't I, suck. I mean, it wasn't riveting completely. Oh, I'll put it this way. I'm not planning on buying a copy for my um, Blu-ray or DVD collection, yeah. Yeah. Um, sort of right. thing. And I'm glad I didn't buy, I was going to buy a used, uh, I was going to buy a Criterion used version, but I realized I can watch it on Amazon Prime for like a, a pound, it was a, um, for like a pound. Well, so it's, on that, that free. it's on YouTube for free as well. And to Oh, is it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I watched it and I watched it remastered and everything like that. So that way I didn't get any, you know, sometimes it was beautifully filmed. I mean, it was pretty, it, it was garbage. a pretty film. Yeah. But yeah, I, I actually had, I had no emotional connection with anyone in it. I think that's probably None. the reason why. Absolutely. That's da- so, David. That's where it probably is because you were not vested in any of these characters. No. I didn't feel it's- sorry for anybody in this movie. Mm-hmm. The only one I felt sorry for was kind of Paula, but I was like, get over him. And then I started getting yeah, annoyed yes. by her. I was like, uh, get uh, over and- him. Jesus. Exactly. You feel a little bit sorry at the beginning, but you're like, now you're being stupid. You're just letting yeah. go. <laughs> I think, especially especially when she comes there and then she's like, um, go, it's not safe. And she's like, but no. And I'm like, okay, you deserve to die then. Because I'm like, good God. <laughs> like, like, I really mean, I think <laughs> I think what would have I think what wouldn't improve the film immensely is that if he started off with a man and he's like this, he finds out he's gonna die as he's trying out, you know, trying to figure out who killed him. But there has to be, I just think that if you're going to be faced with death within 24 hours, I think at some point you would want to face your own mortality and what that means. Yeah. Right. And to and to be able, and that you would tr- maybe try to right whatever wrongs that you had in your life. So therefore, if there is a heaven, you might have a chance. So, and I kind of wish that there was more of that retribution within the character himself. A little bit, I think he finally lot, figured so. out he probably wasn't living li- leading his best life or living his best life. I think there was yeah, regret. But- I did think he did a good job of directing, you know, the well, show regret as things going on. But but the, but at the same time, it's almost like 
his retribution comes to the simple fact of writing this wrong, this crime that was wrong, but in a way it's direct, but it, that has nothing really to do with his life. So, I mean, okay, it's, it's causing the death of his life, but it doesn't cause the, um, the, the way that he's led his life sort of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think that, I think that if it had more, I felt like a little bit more of that connection to it. I was think he married before? Is right. that why I think they alluded to him having trust issues kind of sort of because he had a prior relationship before Paula, I want to say. But... Well, I mean, for God's sakes, you can't, you know. He the had, character, he, had a... he was 33, supposedly in the I film. also think that well, like when he, he... he looked about 50, but. That's uh... what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, but that's by the way, he looks like he was, he was in finance so that makes a hundred percent you know it makes sense um i think with yeah. like if you all he also chose paula i would think that the natural natural reaction would have been too if i'm dying do you want to spend the rest of your day trying to chase down your killer and try and hopefully find them and if you don't you just die or would you rather just be like hey i got one last person who loves me and i'm gonna go spend it with them that that was a little yeah. bit of a like why why wouldn't you you ha- you literally have someone on a silver platter who is like there for you you could have been like fuck it all i'm going home and say hey i got poisoned this is my last day with you and i chose to spend it with you how how romantic is that not tell paul <clears throat> like like he tells him he's like tell paul and tell her what yeah like, no that's right he didn't spit no. it out did he no he's like tell paula <clears throat> and like die and, and like come and- on <laughs> And I also found with Paula, I mean, she's kind of left of this should have, would have, could have situation now. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 that, and that's a, that's a, you know, he could have. That was an ass beating. You know, yeah. Well, you could have put a final stop on that sort of thing, you know? And so, so that's why he left had, all of his money to her. Well, least. that was the other thing I thought to myself, I'm like, oh my God, why wouldn't you like, Before you know, he said, will. Hey, why don't you go and buy yourself that dress? Remember he like tells her like, Oh, buy oh she your can't dress get the permanent. Yeah, it's like get my get your perm, get your like he tells her like, hey, why not? Why would you automatically set up and say, I want all my funds rolled to her, and you know that would have been an endearing quality. And I think David would something. be like, oh, now I kind of like him now, <laughs> like he's yeah. not an asshole. Yeah, and I, I think that's why, I think endearing. that's well, I think I think the film misses a little bit of heart, and I think that's probably the reason why I probably yeah. didn't really enjoy it more. So. Are you looking for a graphic design that will take you to the next level? Or something that shows confidence within a growing market to help you stand out amongst the crowd? Amazing Designs gives consistent and on-brand designs whether you are looking for something conservative or you want to let your imagination soar. They bring professionalism to a high standard and they are able to visualize your ideas and give them that extra edge. Working one-on-one with their designers will give you a design that will live up to your expectations and more. Affordable, expert designs for all occasions whether it's logos brochures or whatever you can dream of amazing designs is your to-go place for creativity and hands-on expertise try amazing designs today contact them via email at amazing designs 505 at gmail.com that's amazing designs 505 at gmail.com or reach out by phone at country code 1-805-203-0427 we love them so much here at the literary license podcast that we use them ourselves but i'd rather be different than be the same well this brings us to our next film which is doa from 1988 which is a new noir mystery thriller film and a remake of the 1950 film we just discussed while it shares the same premise, it has a different story and characters. The film was directed by Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jenkel and scripted by Charles Edward Pogue. The writers of the original film, Russell Rose and Clarence Green, share story credit with Pogue. It stars Dennis Quaig, Meg Ryan, and Charlotte Rampling, and was filmed in Austin, Texas, and San Marcos, Texas. What we're going to do is cut to the trailer from DOA from 1988, and we'll be right back. Someone poisoned Professor Dexter Cornell. Even if there were an antidote, it's too late for it. The poison's already been absorbed into your system. Who was murdered? I was. He'll use his last 24 hours. Surprised to see me up and about. To find out who did it. People had this habit of dying around me. This heat makes a guy do all sorts of insane things. Why me? Careful, Cornell, you're upset. Why did you kill me? You're so wrong. Why did you murder me? And now his number one suspect. You had a plan. I wouldn't call it a plan. 
Dad. What would you call it? A crush. Is the one person who can help him. Let like, go! Maybe someone was looking for him. Maybe someone found him. Where are you going? To the police! I've already had the police. They think I killed my student. They think I murdered my wife. I was trying to kill you. So it's all come full circle, right back to your front door. You're getting in deep, but just hold it! Stop this. I'm a murder victim and a suspect all in one day. Stop the car! No! I'm scared, I'm confused, and I have to go to the bathroom. Am I where I think I am? Freshman girl's dorm. It's not enough. I'm wanted for murder. I'm gonna get hauled in as a pervert. No! I don't get off on this Rambo stuff! Dennis Quaid. You're just gonna have to forgive me because I've never been poisoned before. Meg Ryan. You just glued yourself to me. You dragged me out into the street half naked. You almost got me shot. <laughs> Most girls wait a lifetime for a date like this. D.O.A. Hello, welcome back to the Literary License Podcast. We're discussing D.O.A. from 1988. And so, David, what are your thoughts of DOA from 1988? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I want to be diplomatic and try to say ah, something around... <laughs> and I'll say go. something around... Well, I didn't really I'm enjoy kidding. as much. And I had a little bit of confusion in understanding the story uh, a little bit more than, than the previous one that we watched. But I can also throw my words and shoot them in the end. That's what I'll do. I hated this movie. Really disliked it with all my heart. It didn't make any sense. The character was so horribly negative. There was no character development, no changes whatsoever. He was depicted as a hero at the end. There was this sort of like, oh, he's fighting, he's winning and whatever. And then he died. It, in my head, didn't make any sense whatsoever. Obviously, this is my perspective. Don't get me wrong. But he's, it felt like, he was depicted like a victorious character over the enemies. And, and, and even the story was like a tumble after the other. At least this is my perspective, a tumble after the other. One thing happening and another and another and another. Even when they finally, we finally understand who was actually the, the murderer, it just didn't make sense in the story. It was just, I did it. And that's what it felt like in my head. And I think it was, if the previous one that we watched was, eh, okay for me, this for me was... What in Italian we call Americanata, which means uh, one of those movies just made because you got money, just do it. If that makes sense. But that, again, this is my perspective. So I find it boring with no flavor. I really didn't like it. I'm sorry. I, I found did. it painful. I don't. Oh, okay, I'm not the only one. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Look, I didn't hate it, but it was painful. Okay, okay, that's fine. But you know, it's a, it, it, there was, there, I guess Meg Ryan wasn't totally developed as an actress by then. She had just come off as the world turns, I guess, a few years prior to that. Well, no, she did, she did do Amityville 3. I can't remember point. her in that. I cannot. Amityville 3. <laughs> I don't remember her in that. Which, by the way, went straight to the DVD. <laughs> In 3D, VHS, VHS, Amityville 3 in 3D. I went Uh, to the cinemas hour on that. I I have to say, it's I think they did a what they did with his character, Dennis Quaid's character, was made him the biggest asshole they could possibly. Oh yes, oh my god. No, and the reason being is it makes sense because you know if you're like if you're like an Agatha Christie fan, it's a mystery. You're trying to find right. out because everyone hates his ass and there's like wants him dead. So like they make <laughs> his colleague, you know, who is up for the same type of, of, award of um, or whatever. not award position but, in, the, in yeah. the, in faculty and his ex-wife and like, they make everyone just a suspect as much as they can. And how they do that is making him the biggest asshole. And well, they made Daniel sense. Stern and, look like the but bigger they asshole. made him never <laughs> at any point in the film a redeemable quality that proves that he's not the biggest asshole. And it's like, okay, so you kind of deserve to die. Like, and then yes, I, I guessed who the killer was like immediately. I was like, oh, that's I a friend. I didn't totally have no epic clue what was going oh. on. I was like, it's solely the friend, and I didn't know why. I didn't know, understand. And then the reasoning why, I was like. Oh, and now you're a bigger look. asshole. <laughs> like you're a bigger asshole, and, and I'm like, ah, oh, and that I agree. I didn't but, care for it either because I just think they spent too much time 
making a story about someone who has no redeeming you think they overhyped the story in the beginning yeah. and it was a no total killed letdown. killed by someone who has no redeemable quality so no matter what happens the people nobody that die, in this film of, had redeemable qualities either though when yeah. you look at it they no but you have no assholes. as i'm saying you have no sympathy for any of the characters when None. they die so you're just kind of like oh okay you know well maybe for cookie i almost felt sorry for cookie almost <laughs> almost i wouldn't i wouldn't almost. go that far yeah <laughs> And Brian uh, James was he was the detective. He's always he doesn't get much of a role, but he's got. But that he always look. plays a starchy, you know. They only hire him for detective or whatever. Just to have that look as yeah. the detective, I think. <laughs> and Meg Ryan, let's face it, my God, she was flaky as all fucking get out. Meg when Ryan the- just played <laughs> that role of someone was so enamored by him and wanted to be with him, right? And she played that role of the of the just transfixed on this person who like she and i think that's all they put her as is like someone that could be in cahoots with him to help him on his journey of trying to figure it out because no one else would be with him like no one else is like in the right mind you got what's uh, robin johnson she was not a screen queen i'm trying to remember the other films i've seen her in uh she played cookie for some reason she was kind of interesting you know, at least she had something. Oh, she uh, was in. Oh, she was in After Hours in, in Times Square. Okay, that explains that. But she's she's just got one of those faces that looks like Screen Queen to me for some reason. I kept getting her confused <laughs> with the girl on Night of the Comet. I, don't I know mean, why. I I mean, I found this film. The thing is, I did see this movie when it came out um, back in the day. Um, I thought I enjoy. I, th- I think I. I th- think I think the reason why I enjoyed it at that time because there was a lot of interesting camera angles and the way that shot is quite interesting. Mm-hmm. It was this very busy around- filming. Well, this time oh. around, I actually really, really hated it a lot. I just, <laughs> I couldn't find. I didn't like anybody in it. I mean, it was no. Charlotte. Ra- I mean, every. But to be honest, everyone, everyone's acting acting very well in it. But yeah. Charlotte. Ra- just I mean, Charlotte. Ra- well. Maybe it just well, doesn't translate Rambling. into this decade better. I don't know. No. Well, no, I think you know what you know what I think it is is that first of all, the soundtrack is totally jarring. You know, you got this music that blares out of God knows where, and you're like, "What? Well, this doesn't even fit this movie whatsoever." No, I agree <laughs> with you. I was going to say, yeah. and even the opening scene, it goes from black and white to then color. It's yes, like the weirdest. Yes. Shit. I was yeah. like, "What is happening? Am I having a stroke right now? What is going on?" <laughs> like, it just literally like does this weird. Maybe they were trying to do the connection of the old version. Uh, like, like no, version I think they were trying to do thing. like, "Look, know. it's a little bit noir, and we're going to set you here first, and then we're going to shift you over here." Yeah, to, yeah but like, okay, if if they wanted hmm. the noir, a noir movie or a new noir, whatever, why were there so many scenes of this heroic fighting, jumping, like proper, like hero oh, music? They made him look like a hero. I, I just. Oh, just hated it. Oh, hated well, it. Yeah. I had to sit there and say that I'd never seen Dennis Quaid look so ugly in a film before. Uh, he wasn't yeah. attractive in this film whatsoever. I always we thought he, he, just looked, he looked greasy <laughs> and, and tired. Well, he was a drunk, wasn't he? No, yeah, not really. Uh, like, not but, really. I mean, because- and it's and women are like attracted to him for why you're wondering why there's not one redeeming quality about him. He's an asshole person who had like, who sold like one good book. Was he very talented? Wait, was he very talented and he just wanted to just skim off his last book and the guy was jealous because he has talent. He can't work at it. I, I think what happened was, is he put all of his energy into writing an amazing book. Right. And it cost him his marriage. His wife was probably like, oh, you know, okay, it, okay. it basically the pressure of it. Sorry, not it's like he created this one book. It was amazing. And then everyone's like, when's your next book? And the pressure of trying to write the next right. book. Yeah. And he never did it ruined his marriage because the wife was like, if you just kept writing and you were whatever, you know, it would have worked out and hit that pressure, I think, caved him in. But it was I again, I just don't think I think this movie was a buildup of downfall right because all it was was okay he gets poisoned then this then his wife dies and this person dies and then the daughter dies and then the the butler dies then the the woman kills herself it's like every person's dying but the catalyst is the script to the book that the boy the man was thrown over out the window and then then yeah yes and no yes and no because there's two separate things going on but the mother felt bad for him that well that was her son from an affair so it got oh, yeah. so cookie cookie and the guy that jumped off of the building her sister and brother 
Correct. But they were doing the yes. nasty. Correct. Or they wanted to. Correct. I so that, that was did. the other. They did. So the so convolutedness to it is, is okay. There's a script part of the story, right? Where the script is this brilliant kid who writes it. Right. It looks like right. he commits suicide. He doesn't commit suicide. Clearly, we know that the guy killed him for that script. Right. Now the other part of it is this rich woman is now burying her 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 adoptive son, right? Because <laughs> she, she adopts him, right? As her adopted son. That and then so the whole weird. cookie, the whole cookie thing is like her mother stopping her from being with him. And then you find out it's actually her brother. And it's like such a soap opera thing. I feel bad for her just because she named her cookie. Who the fuck <laughs> does that to their kid? And and so then, you know, Bring she, she, she dies and the butler dies. <laughs> She she her she dies, her butler dies, and then the mom kills herself because she's lost everyone, right? Oh, oh I'm right. sorry. And I left out the husband. The husband, she killed the husband because the husband found out about right. this illegitimate child and wanted Does to get rid of the mother live? No, the mother kills herself. That's, That's right. That's insane. God, dang, the whole, everybody dies except Meg Ryan. There's not one person. I think Meg Ryan was the only one who made it out alive. Yeah, but <laughs> when you agree. But will you agree with that all this mess has got nothing to do with the main story? It's just stuff added just for yeah, the sake. Really by the way, the script it. at the end, at the end, when you're like, it's a script, you're like, then what the hell is any of this? Like, any yes, of the you, other And it's stuff. like, what has it got to do with the main murder or this guy being poisoned? It's just nothing. It's like I was reading story. a review of this movie, and it, they said it was a movie of loose ends. It wasn't loose ends. It just it drifted so off from the topic well, that it was... Like and the funny and it's all it all hinges on this manuscript that the person in the beginning dies falls. Well, off he gave him a pass and didn't even read but, the book though. That's what. Is oh yes. Better, right? Well, that's the thing that the main character has never even read the book anyway. No, no, that's what I mean. It, like, I mean, by the way, he kills the everyone kid. else has read it. But okay, so that this is the other part that made me laugh too. It's like he tells him like, "Oh, this book," and he threw it in the trash, and then he's like, "Oh, it's a brilliant book." Why even say that to him? <laughs> Take the damn script out of the trash when he's gone and go with on with your life. I, was I know, we like, didn't even read it. No, but the guy could have taken the script then. I know, he, he calls could've. him and he's like, he well, now, it, now I got to read it. And he takes it out of the trash and I was like, oh my God. Like, he would have never noticed <laughs> he either. Never right, noticed. John. Yeah. He would have never known someone took he that never, By the way, he never would have had to kill the kid. He never would have had to kill the wife. He ne- like it, like, I can't, yeah. Did they say I mean, what kind of poison they gave Dennis Quaid in this one? It was a yeah, luminescent no, poison. Yeah, it was in lumen. It was um, I think they gave him the stuff that um Herbert West gives um the dead bodies in Reanimator. Same I say that. <laughs> the same <laughs> oh, it's green. The, the yeah. Neon, yeah, the present <laughs> neon. It's like, oh God, we're watching Reanimator. It's not as good. So, but do, uh, do you remember then then the scene they told him in this movie they told him that it was only 48 hours. And the previous movie they told him it was up to two weeks. Yeah. Oh, why? And yes, I did I why did the difference? Well, no, no, they what they said in the first movie was that it could be anywhere could be between to, two yeah. weeks or 24 hours, meaning they don't know. Like they just don't know. Well, in this one, they were very precise 48 hours and you'll die. Yeah. To be honest, I wish they only gave him two hours and die, let him die. I mean, the movie lasted less than two hours. <laughs> they, it would, what it would have been brilliant is it's like, let's, um, we're going to call you back in 24 hours <laughs> to give you your results. <laughs> to be honest, that's that's what would have happened. That's what would have happened if you went to the hospital. That would have been amazing. Like, oh, by the oh, way, gosh. you're going to die Dang. in three, two, one. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the only the only scene I really well not like but I appreciate is that whole scene when they show the whole analysis of the laboratory and even the collection yeah. of the book. Oh my god, I couldn't I couldn't watch that scene because I'm I'm hemophobic, and they put the needle inside oh, the, the needle in the arm. Yeah, it was very detailed. That's the only the scene needle. I actually liked in the movie. Which part was that? When, they're, when, when they're they did a the blood test, when, of course. Yeah, when they did yeah. blood test. Oh, to find oh out okay, blood okay. Blood. okay. He's like, oh, this is this is more than a hangover. And then he goes I... and then he goes to the college hospital. He doesn't go to the oh, yeah. regular yeah. hospital, he goes to that college hospital. Oh yeah, college hospital. But we're, in this one, literally a student drawing his blood. 
<laughs> but in this one, he he he. And they have and they have people. all and they have all and they know all the medical marvels of what could be wrong. The, the other thing that's very interesting about this film as well is you don't get to see him die, which you want to see him die, and you don't get to see that he walks out the door and that's it. Like you don't get Isn't to see it? him drop yeah. dead. Well, well, he I accepts mean, his fate is basically what it is. No, well, I want to see him die. I, <laughs> so I, did I, I at this point, John. Uh, <laughs> I'm just surprised he didn't swan dive the re- like the rest That's of them. How many people swan for. dived in this movie? Yeah. That's swan what I dived was off the number. I, I again, it's like they uh, you uh, so as we were saying, the women in the previous film were very useful characters. Meg Ryan's character, you could have elevated and used that character as a hinge point to maybe the damsel in distress who needs help, and he saves her life for his life, like right. Like yeah, I just thought about like, she was, what was her part she was there. in this scheme though? Was did I miss something? Did she have a part in no. this scheme? No, at the no. bar, no. she was just a student who was in love with him and had a crush yeah. on him, and that's that's all she was. So she had nothing and, to do with what was going on in the bar. With the no. Inter- well, interestingly enough, the, Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan meet on this film, and they marry right after this film, and have baby Huey. I know. So was and, it the super glue and, and, that and, actually bonded them forever? I know. Well, it didn't bond them forever. It bonded them until Russell Crowe came in and got into her knickers. And then that was that it. That was three years <laughs> later. So Russell Crowe was not in her knickers. He hates Russell Crowe. I don't know why he picks because, up Russell Crowe. No, yeah, but no, me, no, no, I'm saying I don't I, I don't like Russell Crowe as an actor. But no, what I'm saying is Meg Ryan and Dennis Quaid met on this film, right. married right after this film, were yeah. married until Meg Ryan met Russell Crowe, and that was it. Yeah, that, I, think, it was like, stars I think that, all I think after that, that changed that. her career too. I think that messed her up bad. No, her I think her face surgery tanked her career. You think I could uh, well tell. I also yeah. think that you have to have a really good agent and people continuing to further your career uh, and i just don't and think it she, probably didn't it didn't probably help that she had to you know that shows her actually giving fellatio in a movie as well that kind of which movie was that well i don't remember that that was one of her last films um actually i gotta look up for some of her films i don't even remember what her films were well i mean she, she she's one of those actresses that works quite well in um you know, like romantic comedies, like, like yeah, Mayo, love. Sleepless yeah. in Seattle, Sleepless in Seattle, When Harry Met Sally, yeah, Sally, yeah, and that's where she kind of benefited the most. Oh, that's right, Sleepless in Seattle. She got a lot of. Well, if you also you notice, know, like exactly most that. most actresses have to evolve with age, right? What are your roles, right? So, you know, I, I again, I just think that if you have a good, you know, agent who is casting, getting you cast for certain roles, it's going to help you. It's not going to hurt you, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, well, that's right. I, she I was in Top Gun too. That's right. I agree with you. I it, this movie is just painful. <laughs> I was watching it. Going, I don't know why it was God, painful. I, it to I honestly don't know why. But I was telling Keith, I go, God, man, I can't get that hour and forty minutes. <laughs> you know what? It's just no it's again the bleakness of it. Like I'm like, did anyone survive this film? I'm like, literally. Oh wait, Meg Ryan did. I'm like everyone else died. Like the entire <laughs> cast died. That's sort of like in Scarface. You know, Michelle Pfeiffer's the only one that walks away. You know. Oh, just- and the other other amazing scene is when the asshole breaks into the person's home when he's having dinner with his family and starts proceeding to beat the shit out of him in front of his. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, I children. was like, are you kidding me? What the hell? Like unhinged. <laughs> unhinged uh well that whole family dynamic was so fucked up and so far but i guess it had something to do with i I just that was just so random having all that family dynamic go on at the same time this guy you know the home alone guy wants the script or the book and you know it would have been so much easier like well again i think they're trying they were trying to make everyone a suspect right so you have Right. You have even the mother who is this looming weird character who is like, is she, is yeah. she maybe the one who could have poisoned him? Right. Because they kind of set it up that each one of them has given him something to drink. That's why he actually comes back to Meg Ryan's character. Cause it's like, what did you give me? Like you drugged me or whatever. And so then it's not her. And now he has to go over here. And then his, he goes to his wife and his wife had eggnog. Did someone put some, did she poison him? Because he, you know, for whatever reason, you know, maybe didn't want to get divorced and she wanted to kill him, you know, so they just tried to make everyone a suspect. Well, I mean, that's a problem anyway, because you can't poison someone's eggnog anyway. It doesn't work. What do you mean? You tried? The reason, yeah, I tried it. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> da- David's okay. still here. <laughs> he came over. He came <laughs> Christmas and New Year. He's still here. No, um, no. The reason why you can't is because eggnog is a dairy or a milk-based drink, and when you and when you and if someone gets poisoned, you use dairy to counter to, it. Set up, to counter attack everything, everything makes sense my mom used to tell me and my brothers when we were children when you had like a food poisoning drink milk drink milk uh, now make make everything makes oh. sense they counter, does it make you does it make you the, barf or is that why like, sure. <laughs> like i've never heard of this i never well, thought that po- 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 poisons work by the simple fact that it mixes with your acids and makes your acids stronger so that way your acid starts it starts eating through your stomach linings and things like that Ooh, or the gosh. milk coats it and uh, milk um basically it's like uh it's like a it's like a car battery sort of thing so it uh, uh settles the turns well, the negatives that causes the positive negatives poison or a toxin that lasts takes that long to kill wouldn't cyanide be quicker more clean more effective than give the guy two to three days to figure out who poisoned him yeah. you know just kill him right right off you know just give him I, I mean i think he i think his i think his friend alluded to the fact that he thought it would kill him quicker i don't think he thought it would like i think I mean, he thought it would actually kill him and this this i mean and this is kind of weird about dennis stern's um career anyway that he's always played that i mean even not, even in playing in a villain in this piece he always plays someone's a bit dopey doesn't he yeah yeah home alone <laughs> yeah home alone I'm or trying to city, think sli- of anything. city yeah, slickers kind of a dork in this. city slickers he's a dork home yeah. alone he's a dork I, but i was also too like a man so a manuscript makes you kill multiple people like i i'm like <laughs> I, I that was that was the other thing is like I'm just a little confused by that. Like you're either just crazy and a sociopath that you like and you liked doing that, not like I just don't have a uh, you know, I just that was not plausibly believable to me. Like, well, I really wanted that, you know, that <laughs> manuscript and I would be willing to kill everyone for it, you know. Like, what? No. Yeah, I well, mean, I guess thing Stern is- had time to read the book, apparently, right? Well, I, I don't know how he had. I don't know how he had time to read the book, considering the guy just handed in his manuscript before he swan dives off. Goes. So how you know, does he we, know it, that manuscript is a well, great? Well, no. Was, apparently, there, apparently there were two. The script. There's two. Okay. There's two. two scripts because he gave one to him and he gave one to the. Uh, so both of them. So gotcha. the script that Dennis Quaid's character had you notice it got burned. So he burned it at his wife's place. He threw it in the fire. Okay, He's like, because right. I only wanted the one script. So that way it just protected me. So then that way, yeah, you know, no one knew about that, that script. And it's better. I mean, it got, thank God this film's before the computer age anyway. So God knows what, how many people would have died once it went out into the web. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, is it's one of, I think the reason why I thought the film was okay when I saw it, I haven't seen it since 1988 when it appeared. And I think it probably might have to be, it's because at that, at 1988, when we got the filming and stuff like this, filming started taking it, Hollywood started filming things uniquely. And we would get more of that, like in the Adams family and stuff like this, with these clever camera angles and cuts and everything like this. Right. But I guess now reviewing it in today, in today's and looking at this kind of stuff, I mean, it's quite, I, I, it wouldn't wow me today the way this was filmed. I think it wowed me at the time, but not now because there's so many films that have done everything I was better. Say, some movies just don't do well in another decade like they did in that, you know, like the 1980s. I'm sure people loved it back in 1988. Well, sure. another thing is where Meg Ryan was cute in the 90s, she's kind of not that cute here. She wasn't, yeah. was she? She well, but she wasn't as the world turned. She was just adorable and as the world turned. I, I think here she just looked older. She didn't look like a college student. She looked like she uh, she just looked like an older college student. She didn't look like a yeah. 19 or 18. She didn't year look old like a freshman. Student. Yeah, that's what I mean. She was like, I'm a freshman. I'm like, really? I think you're more <laughs> look more like a senior. Senior, than to, maybe yeah. postgraduate mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. kind of thing going on. Yeah. It was her hair, though. I don't know who did her freaking hair in this movie, but they did not know how to do hair. <laughs> that was a horrible hair. All of their hair is fucking horrible in this I movie. I don't disagree. 
Where I mean, I have to sit there and say the most interesting character is Charlotte Rampling's character, who is the mother of the mother. She was the most interesting character, probably she the was, best actor yeah. in the whole film. But, but but you could give her a mother goose rhyme to read, and you're, you're, you're captivated by her. She's just one of those kind of actresses, yeah, and I would I I just think that maybe it could you know I I. I I know. I, it's almost like they didn't have enough to keep Dennis Quaid's character interesting, so they put maybe, in this whole their subplot. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that. And then at the same time, it's like Dennis Quaid's not even really a part of anything, really. So why is he being poisoned, really? You know, like you're saying, the manuscript. Well, he burns the manuscript anyway. He was going to burn the manuscript, and you know, as far as we knew, he wasn't even going to fucking read the manuscript. I mean, we had the first 10 minutes about how he wasn't going to read this manuscript. And because the guy's dead, he's going to give him an A anyway, because he's dead. So he's never going to read it, he says. No way is he ever going to read this manuscript. And then the whole movie centers on the simple fact that the guy poisons him to get a copy of this manuscript that the main character who's poisoned is never going to fucking read anyway. Yeah. So you're kind of like, okay well that that's what i mean is like they have that conversation really early in the film where he's like oh did you read it and he's like nah and he literally yeah, throws it in the trash and i'm like you throwing in the trash and don't say shit to him like yeah it's probably garbage you know what i just i was like, just it's probably reading. garbage let him leave and then come in and be like Rrr. like take uh, that I guess, I, did you, you have you guys watched crank that movie with oh god what was his name he's in a lot of uh, movies. jason jason okay. Statham. Yeah, they said them. this is this is a similar this is a take on DOA crank was. I didn't know that till just now. Yeah, but crank too. but crank is great. Crank is fun. Crank this is just a, I love crank. I'll watch that every yeah. time it comes on. It's just I, I think it's an yeah. excellent movie. But uh um, I have a I like Jason Stratham films. So do I. So do I. He's weird kind of looking. I liked him even in Meg. Everybody hated the Meg, but I liked the Meg. A mm. lot of people hated it. But I mean, um, I think but I I don't know. I just think that they're I, I don't know what they were trying to do, but whatever they were trying to do, it didn't work. I think they were trying to, I think they were trying to make it too intelligent or whatever. But can we just say that when we, I think we're overanalyzing, mm. can we just say and admit that maybe it was just badly written? I don't know the if it was badly, was just badly written, written because they had an original script to go off. Maybe it's just the adaptation. You, you know, I mean, something, I don't know. Uh, the 1980s no, I, I think, I think it, I, I think it was condoluted. I think the whole thing was condoluted. It's almost like it's almost like they made it into a mini series. It's like, okay, we're going to turn this into eight episodes, so therefore we're going to write this great big magnum yeah. opus sort of thing. <laughs> oh, no, we can only give you 90, 30, 93 minutes. Well, we need to keep everything in it then. And I don't know. It just, oh, I don't yeah, know maybe. what they were trying to it do. It wasn't but, long. It wasn't long. Well, it, it felt long. It, it did felt feel long. long. It felt very it long. Um, there was a... Long. There was a movie that I can't remember, but it was a, mem- a movie about a man who has like memories of his wife dying. And then it's, it's a mystery. And I was like, that movie was what I was hoping this would be, where it was like a mystery of how and who would have done this. And like, every time it was going further into the movie, I was like, uh, I don't know why anyone would kill him, but he's a big of an asshole enough for anyone to kill him. And then when, like I said, you get the solution at the end, you're like, what? <laughs> like, that's why? What? You know what? And- you know what they should, you know what they should have done is made him the wife of, uh, make him the husband of Charlotte Rampling who gets wow. poisoned. And has un- an assault. And, oh. No, it just means that he that, would have no, that been who brilliant. poisoned him. Yeah. You have to unwrap the who poisoned him, but it all has to do with the the, the mother and the 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 mother you know, keeping the bas- a secret Dennis, about the bastard son. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been amazing. That Quaid would have been really married good. to the mother. Like if meaning, meaning the char- character. If Dennis, if Dennis Quaid's character was married to Charlotte Rampling's character, right. and right. someone poisons him, and he has to figure out what's poisoning, and then it comes unraveled that his wife is the mother oh, of yeah. this person yeah. of this boy who's sleeping with his daughter. Yeah, and it would just and then as the family who happens to be event, her son, her son, or yeah, another yeah. relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and, that and might that, have, that really might have been different. They, they all, mean they could have and, also and, had and, a little... and all be and all because he decided to change his will or something stupid. Yeah, but that would have uh, made it more and, interesting. I can see yeah. that. Well, it would have kept everything a bit more together, and then you would have been able to deal with like family situations and family secrets and the darkness, and I mean, yeah. and get it out of the city and move it into like 
some a southern gothic town and do you know what i, I mean? mean it just would have yeah. made it more interesting you could have also made the chauffeur character be the one that's like the butler did it like the chauffeur is the one who actually maybe poisoned him because he is in love with his wife right like you could have you right. could have just made it a much yeah. better richer film had you removed it, you just, know, put it, it, it seemed like they were in a hurry to crank this out for some reason i mean it just seemed rushed i don't know well, I have a problem too with like if you're gonna do a mystery, follow an Agatha Christie for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like literally exactly. follow an if you're gonna if you're gonna build a mystery, <laughs> follow an expert. Exactly. And play it out and let's see where it goes. And you know. Oh my god, clue was better than this when it comes down <laughs> to the mystery. Clue, clue, I love clue. <laughs> I love Actually, clue. and um what's the other one we did, uh Keith? Oh, uh, Agatha Christie. We did no, clue. We did a we did a clue version of clue. What was it? Um uh, Ma- uh, Murder by Death. Yes. Oh Murder my god. Hysterical that movie. Oh, so good. Yeah. I love murder. I love both of those films. They're actually both quite good. I guess we probably should just write this because I don't think we can trash it anymore. So, <laughs> sorry. We, we, we have been roasting this movie every character. Yeah. Every Negative. <laughs> Negative. Mm. Oh, let's just say we'll, we'll all give it a three. I think it. actually this is the first time we all were just like, fuck it. No, yeah, we were just all like, nope. Uh-uh. Nope and out. Nope and the F out. Oh, I know. I was telling my husband, I go, oh my God, I go, I'm probably going to be the only one that's going to trash this movie. I go, but I found it extremely painful to watch. Yeah. I go, I just don't know why. Usually I find something good about any mm. film. I always mm. find something good. But, you know, mm. it's just, this, this one now. This, this one now. No. Mm. So uh, I guess I we'll start with you, David. How many stars do you give this out of five? What's the minimum I can give? Is it one or zero? You can give um, it a zero. Be nice, a little bit. Uh, if I if I could, I'd give it a zero. I really hated the story of the character. <laughs> no, if you want, if you, if you want to give really, it, a, really, if you want to give it a zero, give it a zero. I'll give it a zero. I'm really sorry. I generally, I, as as uh, you said, Vicky, I thought, oh my god, I'm gonna hate this movie. I'm gonna have sure, to be really and explain it. it was simply painful. because I know that you guys, you were. Um, technical knowledge and more the history of cinema so I thought maybe seeing something I, was like, oh, I just don't like it I'm just gonna I'm gonna focus on the fact that I hated the psychology of the character I hate the story development David, he is so freaking honest it's not even funny so he really means no, everything he's, he's saying people just so you know he's got a total I try, I try, I try, I try. on his face right now <laughs> No, but generally when I rate a movie, I rate the psychology of the characters because I like looking at that or I like the story. I don't have much technical knowledge in cinema, unfortunately. So I'll, I will rate that the side. The man knows what he cinema. likes, people. Yes, and a round of applause <laughs> to David. He's the first person on our show who's ever given anything a zero. Yay! <laughs> oh my God, no, no, no. For the love of God, maybe, maybe I should give it like a 0.5. <laughs> no, the zero is a zero. But- what how about yourself john how many do you give it uh i'm gonna get a 0.5 because it did give me a brief a brief a brief moment of remembering what the 80s used to be and where it was so carefree that college moment where they're all sitting and just enjoying life and not on their phones and just like that that is the 0.5 everything else trash can (laughs) with with the manuscript being burned (laughs) <laughs> what, about yourself, Vix? what do you give it i'm gonna give it at least a 2.5 because joe's not here to defend this one little factoid <laughs> and that's because we had baby huey out of it from the boys so we gotta we gotta give it something because something good did happen out of this movie so we got we've got the boys we've got one of our main characters from the boys because of this union because this movie happened <laughs> I'm going to give it a one because the mother and Malcolm in the middle finally gets to have some sex. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give it that. But yeah, I can't. I'm 
I'm finding it really hard to find anything redeeming about this movie. I don't and, know why it's so bad. We've never. Oh my God. I just thought about something. Was it, about movie, wasn't so his awesome. wife banging the student too? Yes. Oh, that's right. Him. I forgot. I yeah. completely oh, forgot about right. that. Oh, that's right. Yes, his wife was porking him. That's yeah. right. Everybody was fucking this guy. No wonder he must that. have been really uh, talented. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. But she was lonely. He kept leaving her alone. That's what happened. Well, he was young. Yes, he was virile. He was yeah, young. He was, with his he was there. <laughs> He was Viral. Well, like, yeah, Viral's and we also learned that incest is a game the whole family can play. How lovely. That's right. <laughs> 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 Well, this brings us to the end of the Literary License Podcast. Our next make remake is the film, which I'm now looking up now because I am not. It is Salem's Lot from 1979 and Salem's Lot from 2004. That was six. (laughs) And also remember to let you know that next week our um, M&M, which is Monsters and Mad Mad Men, will be dealing with The Invisible Man from 1932 and Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man from 1955. This could quite possibly be a painful event, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, our next books to screen will be Fry Green Tomatoes by Fran, um, Fanny Flagg and the film of the same name. And, of course, we will be continuing Doctor Who, where the Doctor Who episodes will be concerning the Aztecs, and that was filmed in 1964. And Batman, the animated series, will be back next month with four um episodes which will be the internal youth with poison ivy persons of a dream the cape and the cow conspiracy and the laughing fish so what i want to do is say good night for myself good night john good night folks good night david have a long good night good night vix good night everybody take care that's good night for myself and we'll see you next week for the official man This is the last time Cause I'd never say no to you This conversation's been dead on arrival And there's no way to talk to you This conversation's been dead on arrival Yes, so deep Between me and this lost all sleep about you Why not?